Welcome back. I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Economic Corner where we update you on all the biggest global economic announcements. First up is the coronavirus update from India. The second wave of the pandemic in India has shaken the nation with chronic shortages of beds and ox oxygen in hospitals. Countries across the world have offered with help to the struggling nation by airlifting medicines and supplies. Patients are reported to have died waiting for oxygen supply, hospital admissions and proper treatments amidst rising cases, putting the medical system in jeopardy. Meanwhile, Western Australia's international arrivals cap for the next month will be halved as the state is battling a coronavirus outbreak that forced more than two million people into a three-day lockdown from Saturday. The lockdown was ordered after a traveller likely became infected while in quarantine in a hotel and then unknowingly passed it on to two other people in the community. Australia closed its borders more than a year ago and allows mostly only its citizens and permanent residents to return. All except from New Zealand must undergo two weeks of mandatory hotel quarantine at their own expense the hotel quarantine system. Together with snap lockdowns and swift tracking limiting coronavirus has helped Australia to keep its COVID-19 numbers low. That's when it was compared to other developed countries with just over 29,500,000 cases and 910 deaths. Western Australia's Premier Mark McGowan said on Sunday that the federal government had agreed to halve the current rate of 1,025 returning travellers per week to Perth for at least a month. On Saturday, he urged the federal government to find new quarantine facilities away from crowded downtown hotels. Western Australia reported no new locally acquired coronavirus cases on Sunday, but testing of hundreds of people was still underway. And McGowan said it was too early to predict what the government would decide to do on Tuesday when the lockdown in Perth and the nearby Peel region was due to end. On the other hand, Japan has announced a state of emergency in Tokyo, Osaka, Hyogo and Kyoto between the 25th of April and May the 11th. This is in an effort to halt a rapid rise in cases. From the pandemic news updates, we now move on to sports. A crowd of 78,113 pagged into the Melbourne cricket ground for an Australian rules match between Collingwood and Essendon on Sunday. That's the highest attendance at a sports stadium anywhere in the world since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Authorities in Australia's southern state of Victoria, of which Melbourne is the capital, on Friday raised the cap on the attendance at the 100,000-seater arena to 85,000. This was all ahead of the traditional Anzac Day blockbuster. Anzac Day is a day which commemorates a bloody battle fought by the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, otherwise known as the Anzacs, during World War I. It's an iconic day in the regional calendar with bumper crowds guaranteed at sporting fixtures. Last year, the match was played at an empty MCG, but the fans were back with a vengeance at the stadium on Sunday, emitting a roar when commemorative pre-match preliminaries were completed. The AFL is one of the best supported leagues in the world, with crowds averaging 35,108 per match in 2019. That's lagging behind only North America's National Football League and the German and English top flight soccer leagues. Moving on now to reports from Japan as they're facing criticism as COVID-19 continues to rise across the country. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga took another hit on Sunday after his Liberal Democratic Party lost the first national elections since he took office. 
Given his precarious position, he is unlikely to call a general election any time soon and is in danger of losing power when his current term comes to an end this September. Tougher restrictions to curb infections took effect in Tokyo and the western prefectures of Osaka, Kyoto, Hyogo on Sunday. This was after the government declared a state of emergency over the pandemic for the third time. Now for updates on the announcement of some of our important economic data following the recent surge in employment and tumble in the unemployment rate. Australia and New Zealand Westpac Weekly Report has lowered the forecast of the unemployment rate by the end of 2021 from 5.7% to 5%. That previous profile included a lift in the unemployment rate in the June quarter as the forecast of job losses of 100,000 through the ending of JobSeeker worked itself through the system. However, recent data, including the March employment report, which showed a sharp fall in workers on zero hours, a lift in job vacancies in vulnerable industries, and industry-based confidence measures from the Westpac Melbourne Institute Index of Consumer Sentiment. They point to a much more subdued impact from the end of JobKeeper. From a policy perspective, the issue will be the profile for the jobs growth and the unemployment rate in 2022 and 2023. Economic growth is expected to slow down from 4.5% in 2021 to 3% in 2022 and 2.75% in 2023. Next up is the monthly report on the services producer price index. That's the preliminary figures for March 2021 by the Bank of Japan. The services producer price index for all items rose 0.7% from the previous year. The services producer price index for all items, that's excluding international transportation, rose 0.6% from the previous year. Meanwhile, as per Goldman Sachs, Britain looks set to see faster economic growth than the United States this year as the country races ahead with its vaccination program. That's after its slump back in 2020. The bank says in a note to clients that it now expects British gross domestic product to grow by a striking 7.8% this year, above expectations for the US. A Reuters poll of analysts published on April the 13th showed an average forecast for growth of 5% in the UK, the world's fifth biggest economy in 2021. On the other hand, the International Monetary Fund has projected a 5.3% expansion. The UK Food and Drink Federation, which represents more than 800 companies, said the statistics showed that food and drink exports to the EU in February were worth £578.7 million. That's down from £1 billion back in February 2020. This was only marginally offset by an 8.7% increase worth £55.6 million in sales on non-EU countries in February. That's compared with the same period last year. While the pandemic had been a factor in slowing trade, the Federation said the clear sense from business was that Brexit was a driving force. Moving on now to reports on an important meeting between the US and Russia, a summit between President Vladimir Putin and his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden is likely to take place and it could be as early as June this year. That's amid hopes that face-to-face -face talks between the two leaders will ease heightened tension between Moscow and Washington. Now for the upcoming events for the day. Canadian National Railway will report results on Monday. Meanwhile, the board of Kansas City Southern is set to review a proposed $33.7 billion offer from Canadian National. This is the latest twist in the takeover battle for the U.S. rail operator, which could yield the largest merger of the year. Tesla and Pearson also set to report earnings. German IFEO business climate survey numbers will be released later in the day. 
Now that's all for me. Stay tuned with Calkind TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on markets, economy and diverse themes and sector.